So since we're going circular with our profiler, I'm, I'm going to actually going to draw our circular array, if you could picture me taking a array like this and bending it and then connecting the ends like so. That's what I've drawn up here. We need to write appropriate unit tests to ensure that we get the logic correct for the circularity. And, and um, I, I, I think it's easier just to sit back and look at this for a second and say, well, what's all the possible weird scenarios that we should should plan for here and and actually let me let me make this a little bit bigger like this that's a circle by the way <laughs> like so and then here's the here's where they connect okay um what are all the scenarios where we could we should test well we should test writing out less than the number of maximum samples we should test writing out the maximum number of samples perfectly on the end there, uh, just because my name's Jamie King, I think we should test that same amount all the way around, plus just one. All right. Well, I've, I've, if I've learned anything about writing data structures, if you can get the fishy endpoints, end scenarios taken care of, then the rest of it should be fine. Um, and so, having said that, I think we should test just writing out a a small amount of samples, maybe even just one or two right here. And then I want to test writing out a large amount of samples and then going into uh, into here somewhere, okay? So basically we go around once but we stop somewhere after that. And then I want to test going round and round and round maybe three or four times. That's a, That would be a good test as well. So all the possible scenarios. Let's uh, look at our tests here and organize them a little bit. Here are our helper functions. I should probably put these in the unnamed namespace as well. In fact, I think I will just because there's no point in having them completely global. I'll drop that in curly there. Control K F to format and tab that in and Control Shift S to save the file. Now we have the exclude incomplete frames. Uh, I'm going to put that at the bottom. Sample of profiles right now samples, I think, 15 samples, which would be the test that brings us in here a little bit. Let me, I'm just going to stub these out real quick so we can kind of get our ducks in a row. Uh, I'm just going to put a letter there so it parses correctly for now. Control C, V, 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 like so. And I'm not sure how many I'll need, but let's do sample profiles let's just say test uh, small amount of samples large amount of samples non-circular we're not going to go all the way around we're going to test fill the entire array end on the boundary. That's probably a little too verbose, but I'm rolling with it. That's this this test where I go all the way around and stop right here. Actually, I'm going to call this test array boundaries because I think in here we'll do the test, go all the way to the end, and then we'll do the end plus one, plus two maybe, and, and right here. That's the line I'm going for. And then here I want to test uh, <coughs> circulating once plus some and then here go around several times <laughs> now you can debate whether these names are good or good or not I that it's what I'm going with for now uh, large amount of samples non-circular so if you think about it, all these tests are going to do roughly the same thing. It just the, there's a the only difference is where do they stop? Okay, we need to write some samples, and then we need to read the samples that we write and make sure that they are correct. And it just so happens that we've written that logic already, have we not? We have write samples, and then we have check samples, and I have this is at end of file, which I think I will move. I'll move that right here for now. I think Control M M. It's not working. Control Shift S. Now I get this minus sign. Control M M. Come on, Control M M. Well, M M should collapse this, but I guess it's not working. Where's it? M O. Control M O. 
Nope, not working. All right. Uh, so think about it this way. I want to write. Let's see, small amount of samples. So write samples. Let's write two samples, and we'll check two samples. Here I want to write samples, and I'm just literally just throwing this out for now. A large amount of samples non-circular. Well, what's my what's my circle point? I'm going to circle at max frame samples, which is a thousand. And if I'm ignorant, then I'll type a thousand here. But I don't want to be ignorant. I want to base my tests off this constant, so that if I come in here and I change this constant, then the tests will just automatically adjust. So I need to be able to access this private constant within the profiler class. I need to be able to access it right here. So how am I going to do that? Because it's a it's a private data member. Uh, a few things come to mind. One, friends. Right now, C++ gets a lot of grief for its friends, and if you don't know about the friend feature, go look at the C++ playlist and learn about friends and that kind of thing. But basically, friends can see your private data members. I would say private parts, but I don't want you to giggle too much. Friends can see your private data members. Um, and so, a nice thing about friends is, hey, I need this thing to mostly be private unless I'm testing it, and then I need to make it accessible to the test. Well, a friend would solve that problem, except this, the profiler.h and profiler.cp, cpp, they reside in a different project than the engine tester, so that's not going to work out quite nicely. Um, uh, just a little side note, .NET, not C Sharp, .NET has the concept of friend assembly simply for this reason. You can make assemblies or friends and then and essentially assembly is like a project. So this assembly could go in here and access what it needs to get its testing done. Anyway, uh, I think for now I'm probably beating a dead horse. It does. It's static. It's const. It's not going to hurt anything. Let's make it public. I don't want to, but I think it's more important to be able to test correctly than it is to keep this a private data member. I could add a getter to that, but eh, it's constant. Let's roll. Okay, well, whatever. Um, so here I'm, I'm going to do 2-2, two, two, and then here I'm going to say profiler max frame samples. Uh, let's do that times... Point eight. All right. Let me let me uh, get rid of this for now. So we're we're not going to go all the way to the end, but we're definitely going to go a large amount of samples non-circular. So write samples like that. Uh, check samples, and we're going to take this same value here. We need to be able to tell check samples how many there are. Well, let's just do a constant const unsigned int num samples this test gets that and now I can just instead of copy and paste the expression here which I don't want to do I can paste it right here instead I think I think we're good to go um I do need to mention one thing though yeah this is probably important um since I don't have a getter on this, then this is going to become a copy and paste job by the compiler. And if I change this value to something else, it's going to force me to uh, recompile any project that consumes this value. That's that's important to know. Whereas if I had a getter, um, the getter would allow me to just grab dynamically what changes, and and uh, I wouldn't have to recompile. All right. So since I changed the constant here with it being public like this, if I use that constant here, I'm going to be forced to recompile. I'm not too worried about that. I probably should be. Uh, but if I had a getter, I wouldn't have to worry about that because the constant, the accessing the constant would be determined by some runtime code. And so all I'd have to do is recompile the engine and not necess necessarily the tester. Of course, I could make this non-constant and make it configurable and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to take up all the time for that. Uh, what's the problem here? Oh, yeah, right. Samples doesn't take that much. And again, I'm just kind of pseudocoding for now. So let me guess what? Array boundaries. Same thing, but I'm going to do that. I want to do this. And then I want to do this. All right, this is where I'm testing going up to the very edge then I'm going to the edge plus one and just because I'm Jamie King and I'm a little bit 
uh, too picky about this. I'm just going to go try going past two as well. I'm just trying to touch those boundary conditions. Uh, circulating one plus some. Uh, right, same thing. But let's do one plus some would be about 1.5. Okay, I'm, we're going to go around the array once and then kind of stop somewhere on that second iteration and then go around several times. The idea would be something like this. But instead of 1.5, let's pick a 3.1415. <laughs> that's not pi, but it looks like pi, doesn't it? I, I, let's just roll, roll that. We're going to go around three times and sum and be sure that we're still good. I probably should. Do a test where we go around twice and check the boundary conditions. Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, a lot of pseudocode. Obviously, this isn't going to compile. We need to massage this, make it compile. We'll do that in the next video.